Well, I'm in Atsugi City, Kanagawa Prefecture, situated right next to Tokyo. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a Takumi who specializes in taste. He has made possible what many have considered impossible. Let's go meet him. Hello. Hello. This is our Takumi, Hidekazu Ikezaki. Ikezaki invented this taste sensing machine. It is the first machine in the world that can measure tastes and represent them as numerical data. It's really possible for a machine to measure differences in taste like people? Yes, but before I explain, let's do an experiment. Three different types of coffee will be tasted. Me versus the taste sensing machine. Whoever analyzes the taste in greatest detail wins. A was very bitter and sour. It was quite strong in taste. And B and C was a bit more milder, but I couldn't really tell the difference. So it was very, very close. Next, it's the taste sensing machine's turn. These finger-like rods are dipped inside the cups of coffee. One hour later, the machine delivers its results. The machine has clearly identified the faint differences in bitterness and sourness between B and C. It also evaluated the astringency, savoriness, and even the aftertastes of the coffees. I could sense the difference between sourness and bitterness, but the machine can evaluate so much more. I lose. How exactly is taste analyzed numerically? The secret is in these six finger-like sensors. On the tip of each is an artificial lipid membrane, much like the one found on the human tongue. These membranes can pick up taste factors. This happens when the membrane comes in contact with a taste, which causes a change in electrical potential. The machine measures this change, detecting the taste. For example, here you see a piece of sensor film being soaked in a chemical substance that will allow it to capture sweetness. Each of the six sensors is engineered to capture one of six taste factors as well as any aftertaste. The development of the taste sensing machine began when Ikezaki encountered Professor Kiyoshi Toko of Kyushu University. Professor Toko was studying taste. They began to work together on a machine with the same sense of taste as the human tongue. Its development would take 20 years. For example, we had no idea that we could create a membrane that would only respond to one taste factor. We had to make thousands of membranes before we understood the mechanism at work and could come up with the current design. The taste sensing machine is currently being used by many large food manufacturers, both in Japan and abroad. It has been hugely important in the development of new food products. It is especially useful in helping companies design products for different foreign markets. Instant noodles, one cup from Japan, one from Vietnam. Using the taste sensing machine, we can see the differences in Japanese and Vietnamese palates. By numerically measuring these differences in taste, companies can develop products that are a precise fit for any country or region. All over the world, taste preferences are different. It's taste culture. To see that objectively with the same yardstick helps you understand these differences. Food companies become able to see with their own eyes the differences among their consumers and then develop products that are a good fit for them. It's an interactive communication tool. By spreading this yardstick of taste around the world, I want everyone to be able to share in this culture of taste.